So the image that you see here on the left hand side is an original image. And this particular image is sharing some details about the new GPT-40 mini model and how cheap it is. So I really like this particular chart. And one idea I had is how do I use these AI to reproduce a figure like this? So this is an idea that I've been exploring for some time now. And I think we have very capable models to be able to do this today. And so I will show you what that process looks like and a few more thoughts on how you can experiment with these type of models, not only for figure generation like this or production of figures, but even more complex type of artifact. And again, the idea is to sort of mix these large language models. The reason is because as some of you may know, if you have used Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, they have really cool features that allow you to do code generation and even display or preview that code that you have generated with that model. But I think the vision capabilities still lack. A lot. And on the other hand, we have GPT-40 Mini, which is a very powerful reasoning model that has very strong vision capabilities. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a combination of these two in a sort of agentic workflow. At least that is the idea in the end. But here I'm just gonna show you manually how this process would work and how you can achieve something like what I'm showing you here on the screen. So let's get going. So this is a tweet. I was doing some experiment over the weekend, just hacking a bit with these new models. And this is how this idea came out. How do we combine these models, right? How do we effectively program these models to communicate with each other? What I'm gonna show you is how to do it manually, but the ideal program would be to make or convert this into a sort of agentic workflow where all of this happens automatically. So I'm going to show you the process, but essentially this is what I wanted to do. I have this particular image as, as I showed you, or this nice figure, and I want to reproduce this because what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to do my own analysis, like plug in my own numbers and in an automatic way, do some sort of analysis. So I want to be able to do that analysis and just plug in numbers, plug in my own models and sort of automatically do the analysis for me. So so this is kind of the end goal, but I still need to figure out how to reproduce a chart like this. I really like this chart. So how do I do that? And I want this to be generated in code because once I have it in code, I can use that as an artifact. And I'm going to use GPT 3.5 Sonnet to generate that code for me. So I'll get to those steps. So the first step is we need to use, as I mentioned, GPT 4.0. So I'm going to show you what that first step looks like. So I'm going to take that image paste it here in the playground, and I'm gonna use GPT-4 on Mini, and then I'm gonna query it like this or instruct it like this for it to share a set of clear instructions that I could pass to another LLM to reproduce this particular chart. The goal at the end is to take this output and give it to another model to create the chart from scratch. So I did not tell it which model, I just told it that I'm gonna use it in, with another model. And the other model that I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use this Cloud 3.5 Sonnet model. So I'm going to use cloud.ai for that. So once I query it like that, then I can just run this. Right. And the idea is I will take what's generated here, the instructions, and just copy paste this over to cloud 3.5 Sonnet. When I first prompted this particular model, I did not give it an image. So I rendered this particular chart just purely on the instructions that I got from that first initial prompt. So the instructions here that describes what this figure contains. I think even this first step is really powerful. Although the image that we get here rendered, no, it's not entirely close to that original figure, right? It has, um, you know, these nice little like angles here and it has this logo and you can even see the fonts and the coloring and so on. I really, it, sort of understands it a bit. You can see that the pricing is all over the place. So ideally we want to provide it better context, right? And we know this model is really powerful. You can actually look at the code, right? It's doing that in code, it's SVG. So what I'm going to do here as a next step now is, and I'm doing this manually, as I, as I mentioned, the goal is to eventually automate this whole thing, but I need to do the experiments first and see what works and what doesn't. This is sort of the natural process of experimenting with LLMs. Let's see, if I were to provide a little bit more information to Cloud 3.5 Sonnet to see what it does. And so what I did is I provided it the figure because usually by providing it a little bit more context helps the model. So within this conversation, I gave it this figure, the original one, and then I query it like this. Attach this image of the figure. I want you to reproduce for your reference. Please fix the line so it is closer to the attached figure. 
right? So I'm asking for a bit of modifications. And typically, when you iterate with this cloud model, it really fixes the artifact that you're trying to generate. But this is what we got in the second try. So this is a lot closer to this image. You can see that the logo is a bit off. I do understand that maybe there are some constraints with this, but um, this is not so important. I really want to get all of this particular details right. And so you can see here the timeline looks quite okay, still can be improved. I see the November and January are not so close, but even the coloring here looks a, a bit weird. And you can see here also that this particular uh, GPT-4 minute detail is left or cut off, right? So it, maybe this model really didn't understand that that was important and I need that within the chart. One thing I can do is I could keep iterating and it probably gets better just by iterating on Cloud Super 5 Sonnet right within the conversation here. But what if we could do this faster? And this is where agentic workflows come into play. So with the agentic workflow, what you want to do is you want to automate this sort of process and thinking and reasoning because you don't really want to be iterating you know, over and over and over with this model, making the mistakes, because you will make mistakes and you might get frustrated. So can we automate this part? This is the big question I'm asking here with this particular experiment. Can we use another capability of a stronger model? So like GPT-40 Mini to sort of figure out what is the error and how to fix that error? I only need to do this once, hopefully once or twice, and I don't need to figure out manually, you know, sitting down here for hours to reproduce this chart. So if I can do that process in an automatic way, then I can scale all this effort. Right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna go back to GPT-4 Mini. I'm gonna take the chart that it generated, right? That second iteration, which is this one, and I'm gonna give it the original figure as well. And then I'm gonna prompt it like this. The second figure, again, I'm gonna use Mini here. Just need to show that here. The second figure is an attempt from an LLM to reproduce the figure on the left using your vision capabilities. Please assess what changes the LLM needs to do to correct the figure. So I'm using this as a sort of providing feedback to the model. And this idea of providing feedback to the model, I think is really powerful. So once I have that, I can run this. Um, let me just put more tokens here. I can run this and it will basically generate that description, right? And I'm telling it, I'm gonna provide it as a feedback to another model, that's really important. So it's gonna provide to me the corrections and then I'm gonna use that as feedback and pass it back to Cloud Super 5 Sonnet. No, I cannot really view the artifact generation here. This is why I'm using Cloud Super 5 Sonnet. I think you will see this more and more that these models and these companies are separating themselves because they're obviously serving different users, different developers, different enterprise users as well. And they are really fixating on their own use cases for which these models have a lot of strength and capabilities. This is why we're seeing these sort of different directions. I'm gonna take the output of that. Now I'm not gonna use the same output here, similar to who I did not use the output here because I wanna show you the example, right? And it'll be hard to reproduce because it will always generate potentially different instructions here. Anyway, so I'm gonna take that and then say, try to use the following corrections suggestions to fix the chart. And the correction suggestions are the ones that we got from GBD4 or Mini. I'm just gonna directly copy paste that here. You can see that GBD4 or Mini is so good at describing images, what it's seen images, and understanding the context, right? And understanding and making comparisons and even suggesting what is the adjustments that you need to make. The big question here for me is, is it possible to use two different, very different models to talk to each other to sort of automate this whole workflow? And now it generates this, is how it generates some text here. But anyways, the third iteration of this looks something like this. And when I did this, obviously I'm not iterating on the initial prompts. I'm not iterating on this yet. I'm not iterating on this yet. I'm, I'm sure I can fix this a little bit better. I'm sure I can optimize these prompts. I'm not doing that yet. I'm just sort of testing an experiment. This is the first experiment and this is the first iteration on those prompts. So I've used essentially like four different prompts in this particular workflow. And this is what I got. So what you see here is what I showed you initially in the video. And this is the output of AI workflow 
what it generated, right? Using the combination of these two models. GPT-40 Mini back into cloud, 3.5 Sonnet, and back. So this is what the AI was able to generate, or this AI workflow. Really want to work on this a little bit more and experiment with it, but I felt like I could share this just to give you more ideas on how you can explore language models today, how you can experiment with them, and creative ways on how you can combine these models to communicate with each other. Because so far, we use these models separately, right? I hear a lot of people saying that, you know, they are committed to just using one model, but I think that's not the right approach when you're working with LLMs. In my experience, the approach is to sort of leverage capabilities of these LLMs and combine them in one sort of workflow. The challenge here is getting them to communicate to each other in a way that makes sense and make it effective at the task that you're trying to address. So I'm excited about this. Um, I am going to be sharing more results on this. I am going to be experimenting. You can see that it's not perfect, right? You we get all the shading and so on, but you can see that in this part here could have done a little bit better. Maybe if we provide a bit more feedback or do the feedback loop a bit more, like maybe three to five times. And I think this will only get better. The logo as well, I think this is a limitation of the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. It's not going to generate logos, no matter how hard you try. And so, but this is something to experiment with as well. Otherwise, everything looks okay. Even the placement and the shading and the coloring looks okay. The chart here, the note as well, the font colors, maybe a bit different, but I actually like this font color shading here uh, because the highlight is the cost per 1 million tokens. So that'll be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Stay tuned for more and see you in the next one.